This is Big New Brzezinski. He was national security advisor to Jimmy Carter. He is currently a top foreign policy advisor to Barack Obama. He has proven to be an outstanding friend uh, and somebody who I've learned an immense amount from. And in 1979, he supervised a covert American intelligence operation to fund and train the Afghan Mujahideen that would form the base of Al Qaeda. U.S. National Security Advisor Brzezinski flew to Pakistan to set about rallying resistance. He wanted to arm the Mujahideen without revealing America's role. On the Afghan border near the Khyber Pass, he urged the soldiers of God to redouble their efforts. We know of their deep belief in God, and we are confident that their struggle will succeed. Now, that land over there is yours. You'll go back to it one day because your fight will prevail and you'll have your homes and your mosques back again because your cause is right and God is on your side. The CIA involvement with the Afghan Mujahideen including an estimated three to twenty billion dollars of American taxpayer money that was spent by the U.S. to train and equip them, has been known and acknowledged for years. The operation was part of a Cold War gambit to bog down the Red Army in what was to become the Soviet Union's own Vietnam. An unending struggle to occupy a country against a determined, and thanks to the CIA, well-funded and trained guerrilla resistance. We must recognize the strategic importance of Afghanistan to stability and peace. A Soviet-occupied Afghanistan threatens both Iran and Pakistan and is a stepping stone to possible control over much of the world's oil supplies. The scheme, known as Operation Cyclone, was in fact an amazing success. The years of guerrilla fighting and thousands of deaths demoralized the Red Army, drained the resources of an already overstrained CCCP, and emboldened citizens in other Soviet satellites to throw off the yoke of communist repression. The Red Army retreated from Afghanistan in 1989, and the Soviet Union fell shortly thereafter. What is hardly ever acknowledged, however, is that the CIA involvement with the Mujahideen did not start after the Soviets entered Afghanistan, but before the invasion took place. This startling admission came directly from Brzezinski himself, who stated in a 1998 interview with a French periodical, According to the official version of history, CIA aid to the Mujahideen began during 1980, that is to say, after the Soviet army invaded Afghanistan, 24th of December 1979. But the reality, secretly guarded until now, is completely otherwise. Indeed, it was July 3rd, 1979, that President Carter signed the first directive for secret aid to the opponents of the pro-Soviet regime in Kabul. And that very day, I wrote a note to the president in which I explained to him that in my opinion this aid was going to induce a Soviet military intervention. This is an important point. What it means is that the CIA did not merely take a pre-existing movement of freedom fighters and aid them in their fight against the Soviets. What it means is that Western intelligence actively recruited Islamist extremists for the express purpose of provocateuring the Soviets into invading. By Brzezinski's own admission, if these Mujahideen had not been fostered by the CIA, the Soviets may never have invaded Afghanistan in the first place. In a very real sense, then, Brzezinski and the U.S. government fostered an extremist element of militant Islamists and helped form them into an effective fighting force. It was from the ranks of these Afghan Mujahideen that another group was to emerge, 
composed mostly of so-called Arab Afghans or foreign fighters who came to Afghanistan to take up the jihad against the Soviets. The expulsion of the Soviets from Afghanistan was to be just the first of their battles, and after the Red Army left, their attention was to turn elsewhere. Of course, the geopolitics of the era required that the U.S. not be directly implicated in funding and trading the Mujahideen. Domestically, Americans would have been outraged had they been aware that they were footing the bill for training and equipping Islamic militants. And internationally, if the Soviets knew the extent of the CIA involvement in the region, it could have brought the two superpowers to the brink of World War III. Consequently, the training, arming, and funding of the Mujahideen was run through a series of fronts and compartmentalized so that not even those supposedly directing the operation knew its full extent. The official story is that U.S. funding, arms, and training went exclusively to the Afghanis, with the money for the foreign jihadists, or so-called Arab Afghans from which Al-Qaeda would spring, coming from the Saudis. The facts on the ground, however, tell a very different story. Within this group of Arab Afghans was an even smaller group centered around Osama bin Laden, a Saudi-born heir to the bin Laden family construction fortune. In Afghanistan in the late 1980s, his group consisted of about a dozen people. This group was known as Al-Qaeda, or so we are led to believe. Bin Laden himself claimed in his last authenticated interview in late 2001 that the name came from Abu Abaydah al banashiri one of his accomplices in establishing the training camps in Afghanistan. Strange then that four years later, after the 7-7 bombings in London in 2005, Robin Cook, the former leader of the House of Parliament in the UK, would write an article for the London Guardian in which he claimed Al-Qaeda, in English, the base, literally referred to the database of Mujahideen who were being handled by the CIA in Afghanistan. Some researchers have even noted that Al-Qaeda is a slang term for the toilet in Arabic, hardly a name for a shadowy global terrorist organization. Regardless of how the group got its name, the fact is that this small group of militants were nurtured with the Afghan Mujahideen by the CIA at the behest of Zbigniew Brzezinski. There is evidence of direct U.S. involvement with Osama bin Laden and the hardline Arab militants in all three areas of Operation Cyclone, including funding, training, and arming the Arab Afghans.